What a great, great pleasure to introduce and welcome Barbara and Gina, who together this year brought a film um, called Generations. And that is a very interesting name. It's obviously dealing with generational topics, conflicts. And um, I would say that you, Barbara, kind of pass on your knowledge to a younger generation, your knowledge in film, your knowledge concerning queerness, concerning sexuality. And my first question to you would be, when did you feel the first time that you kind of have to pass on this knowledge, that it's really oh. necessary to do this? Magnus, I think it was after I uh, had cancer mm -hmm. and recovered from the chemotherapy that I realized that I needed to get my archive together, my book out, and um, pass on to another generation what I knew, or at least the people that I knew, because Gina passed on a lot to me about developing film, about working all night long, <laughs> things, uh, her own talents, you know, so it was really a shared experience, yeah. yeah. But I say that I, I began it with her because she hadn't made a film for five years, and yet she's a very talented filmmaker. And I just thought, we're going to lose this generation. At least we're going to lose Gina Carducci if, you know, she doesn't make a film. So maybe she'll make one with me. And voila. Here it is. We the Berlinale. It. We did it. Of course, very relevant for the Teddy Awards because it is queer as hell, <laughs> I guess. So how did you meet the two of you? We met at Cineric, the film lab where I work. Mm -hmm that was so generous to um, support us in making the film there. And um, we first, though, met because I was an instant fan of Barbara's work when I first saw it and realized that my film education consisted largely of white men. And I had to go kind of seek out the women filmmakers on my own, uh, which I did at Canyon Cinema in San Francisco. And then when I saw that Barbara was in the lab, I ran up to her and introduced myself and asked her if she wanted to see the contact printers and have a tour of the lab and we started talking and she said, let's make a film together. She heard that I hadn't made a film in five years and um, she thought it was time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how, was the, how, how did you decide um, the topic? When, when was it clear we, we will do a, a film that deals with generational conflicts, topics, passing on knowledge? I think we started just by playing around. Um, we both had Bolex cameras, so we met in my studio. We filmed each other. I've always wanted to show the aging spots on my face and not hide them like mm -hmm. we're taught to do. Mm -hmm. So I shot that and I shot Gina with all her mechanics with the film. and. Then we decided to go to Coney Island because it was falling apart. It was aging. So that was the perfect place to go. And I was thinking of the spots on the face or like the spots on the film emulsion itself because I love to hand process and kind of focus on, also in the same way, focus on what is usually hidden and expose mm -hmm. the process rather than try and hide it. So both of those things together um, we exposed and so the flakes of film fall off, like skin falls mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. a metaphor mm -hmm. for aging. And the 16 millimeter process is, mm -hmm. there are very few, there are only two labs mm -hmm. in New York right now mm -hmm. that, do, that do 16 millimeter. Wow. Yeah, so it's like everybody's doing digital, but people like Gina are keeping film alive by making it. <laughs> wow. And people like Barbara are keeping film alive by making us make it. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. A great inspiration, a great source of inspiration. That is, that is true. You already mentioned that you chose Coney Island as a location, Astroland, I think, mm -hmm. because um, it is really showing this aging process. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Coney Island is a very special, special place. It is, has a very special atmosphere. How, how did you experience shooting there? How was it? Well, we had to sneak a bit because we didn't really have um, direct permission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I love taking a risk. And Medical I think it's filmmakers. so much more fun yeah. if you just shoot on the sly, you know. 
And um, we went under the boardwalk and we crawled through a no trespassing sign. And she said, if I can do it, you can do it. And there <laughs> we were, you know, I'm just trying to keep up with her. We were crawling and through the old condoms, making our way down to the seriously. clean sand. <laughs> seriously. Because at first really? you had to crawl a, because you couldn't stand, you know. Yeah. And yeah. then there's like trash and sand. You're crawling with our bullocks in front of us, our backpacks behind us. And then I secretly was thinking, I hope I get arrested with Barbara Hammer. You know, because she so said, hot. we'll just, t I know. <laughs> she said, we'll It'll just be on say. the cover of New York Times, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Officer, we had to That'd circle okay. back to nitrate kisses and get this shot for yeah. our new film, and yeah. somehow it would work. But yeah, um, just, it was fun, wasn't it? Was great. It gives you a lift to do something a little out of the ordinary. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when you were just mentioning that you were kind of crawling, you know, like in these, you know, at Coney Island, and I just immediately had this image of struggle. You were like making your own way yeah. into it, your yeah. own individual personal way by, into it. Like the way we do film. And it's a, it's a struggle sometimes, and it hurts, it's mm -hmm. difficult. Is that also something that you are kind of stressing in your project, that it's it's not only always about love and beauty and aesthetic and all that stuff, which is great and beautiful, and we want to have this dominant in our lives, but we sometimes have to crawl and be down, and it's painful. How many nights did you stay up all night working? Or at least way into the early know. morning, yeah, and I mean, sleeping at the lab, you know, because you work there too? I mean, that was incredible. That was an incredible gift yeah. to the world for you. I really thank you for doing that. Thank and you for getting me film. back into it, seriously. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that was, I think it was, we were exposing the process mm -hmm. with that, you know, mm -hmm. we we're filming each other, shooting film, and um, every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So, so we got to see that struggle and it, the It's a filmic struggle. relationship. Yeah. You know, it's a relationship film, but you think of most queer films being like dating or sex, we never get to see queers working together. This is really crucial. This is our profession. Mm. You know, mm. we want to, we are queer professionals. <laughs> and that's what the film shows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got to expand what queer cinema is, mm -hmm. you know, and not just make it a romantic love story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the topic is, is generation and you share a lot, but also you belong to different generations. So there must be differences you know, in your lives, because you really had to struggle in a very different way, you know, with your age than, than we probably kind of, we have also our struggles, but it's, I guess it's very different. How did you, how did you talk about that? How well, I refused to stay up all night. <laughs> that was one thing. Um, I don't know that we ever really talked about it. We, from ever since we knew each other, we've tried to share our generations like mm -hmm. Gina knows my lover of 22 years and I know her lover of 22 months right exactly. She, <laughs> is, is that true that yeah way? before she even knew um, me really before we even shared too many stories she said you're spending too much time on dates and not enough time on filmmaking because she herself had her own like polyamorous you know, queer days, and she oh, knew that days. I was up to that. Oh, no, you mean like da you, her okay. days, my past, like back past in the past. So yeah. you have days in the week where like, <laughs> 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 oh, I used to. Yeah, okay. This girlfriend that day, that yeah. girlfriend that day, and then so I couldn't knew. remember who was who. Oh yeah, we know. <laughs> so I said, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> so she knew what I was up to, and and it was hilarious. We were that just like fun. joking around about it, you know, yeah. and that she and Flory are not retired, but they're refired, and you know, it's just like we're sharing all of our relationship Hi, stories. <laughs> and then, and even about gender, you know, mm -hmm. we're like from a different generation that... Um, gender wasn't so fluid as yeah. it is now. And we weren't so, making those choices that yeah. dykes and queer men are making today. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about that too, and um, the importance of, you know, women and women in film, and then also the importance for me and sort of our younger generation of, um, you know, I can be a dyke if I want or a fag if I want or whatever I want, you know, and so we've kind of and shared some of that too. And um, Barbara's, you know, hip, she can take it. Like she can, <laughs> she's like right there with us in, in all those conversations too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate change in society. And I, I want we older folks to embrace youth. And of course there's gonna be difference. You know, it's not something that we grew up with and they made the change. 
your generation made it, but we have to embrace it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's, you know, you don't want to be this old dog who can't learn new tricks. That old idea that age has to do with not changing, that's so passe. That's and so we don't passe. need to, it's all about, you know, we don't need to be limited by a category. Just, that's you, don't, it. you know, the women. Age two. Don't yeah. need to be limited. Age yeah. doesn't have to limit us, you know. So it kind of all ends up um, relating in that way. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. So um, how do you envision queer culture to look like in 30, 40 years? Oh my God, it's going to be so rainbow. <laughs> so rainbow. We're going to have to double the rainbow because there's not going to be enough colors for all of us. <laughs> That's great. What, 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 what is your yeah? What is your dream? You're like if you're you're free now, you can really like let everything go. What do you? How is it going to look like? Yeah, my friends and lovers are of all sexes, ages, mm. colors, religions, abil physical abilities, and that we all are big, big, big oh, circle <laughs> like this, and we are kissing <laughs> and loving. And there's nothing stopping us. No, that's, that's my beautiful. dream. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, what is yours, Gina? Uh, <laughs> Happy birthday, Gina. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> it is my birthday oh. on the most monogamous Hallmark holiday of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. I mean, generation to generation, that's a beautiful wish. Why not, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How was the reaction to your movie? How did how did the audience react to it? I think very positive. They love so Generation. Yeah. And um, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard because we're so far away from them, especially in a Cinemax theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would really like to show it sort of in a living room or a more intimate situation where we can really go in depth. But um, people seem to really like it. Don't, and all the aspects of it, the fluidity, the abstraction, mm -hmm. you know, they're always asking about the sound, mm -hmm. our two screenings mm -hmm. that we've had here. Yeah. How do you think? Yeah, I agree. And uh, I think some people find some irony in um, our choices, you know, where Barbara is the older person editing digitally and I'm the younger person editing on the flatbed with the tape splicer and, you know, and then some people commented on the experimental film and the abstraction, you know, and the focus that I have maybe even as like an homage to the history of, you know, abstract film. And then, mm -hmm. um, and that's coming from the younger person who wasn't even around for it, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, for like the height of like maybe yeah. the 60s structuralist experimental film or something, you know, and um, so, you know, it's just, I think people really like it that we did this project and it, it's sort of an experiment exposed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the film is about in terms of the experimental editing? That's, part? I don't, I don't know. I don't okay, know. Okay, just for the record is. then, yeah. we took the same footage and duplicated it and I edited without talking to Gina or showing her sound and picture separately on a computer. She yeah. took the same sound bank and image yeah. bank and edited on a flatbed, cutting mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. film tape and splicer. the sound with a tape splicer. Mm -hmm. After, let's say, six months, we finished, we had a limit. Okay, you do 14, 30, 14 minutes, 30 seconds, I do that. Yeah. Then we'll look at them and marry them. Decide which one goes first. And we did this so that we could not only work together in the shooting, but we could be individuals in the editing right, right. and not have to make compromises at that stage. That seemed important to the whole mentoring process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mentoring process. You are you are a teacher in a way to her. So what what it's if you are yeah it's a lot of responsibility in a way. Oh, it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> she was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all about inspiration. Yeah. I think that um, I love to inspire people to do their work, be it film, poetry, music. It's what I love to give. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy for me to give it. And it's so, people are so ready to receive that. Mm -hmm. And they just are waiting for the moment. 
how did you how did you find out about the skill that you are really talented in, in giving it? Do you remember? Hmm. That's a good idea. That's a good question. I think through individual critiques in art schools that I've taught at, when I'm one-to-one -one mm -hmm. with someone, looking mm -hmm. at their work, painting, sculpture, film, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. that my way of entering the work and being involved with it helps re-inspire the artist to finish their work. Mm -hmm. What kind of critique is Barbara? What, how, how, does, how does she... I didn't critique. Criticize? Yeah, see, we didn't get to... Mm -hmm. We didn't do that. Do that, um, but the one thing that we except in the shooting did yeah. is in the shooting, which was great because there's a section of the film where we're inside the the subway in the in the train, and she says, "You shoot with your body, the emotional body, not the measuring mind." Because there was a big difference in the mm. way that we were shooting together. Um, I was getting out the tape measure and. Um, measuring to make sure the focus was just right and you know uh -huh. I would spend you know several minutes cleaning the camera and the lenses and um, sort of rehearsing a shot first and then when we got the rolls back my my shots were so static and hers she was just going in and out of focus and it was stressing me out you know while we were shooting I was like don't you want to make sure you're in focus and you know freaking out about because of some film school thing or whatever that I had in my head and um, so that was a beautiful experience and that was kind of a way that we collaborated and maybe I got some critique in that way and it helped me instantly with my cinematography. So I said shoot with the emotional body, you know, feel your body, be spontaneous. You can mm -hmm. edit later if you mm -hmm. want, don't want all those jitters or whatever, mm -hmm. but be able to go to that smile. Go to those eyes that are so brilliant, yeah. you know? Shoot mm -hmm. from the hip and shoot at the yeah. sky and yeah. just do it and go see what, what you your get body later. tells you to do. Pay attention to your body. And maybe I would, I would take those kind of risks in hand processing or in yeah. like sort of lab, yeah. Yeah. but not, not in shooting, you know? So that was amazing yeah. for me. Yeah. It changed yeah. my... Did, did you have to learn this too, Barbara, to, to use your body and to, to rely mm. on your body? Or no. was it just always there? You yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> I um, um, never had a problem with my body image. So I've always liked my body. And I like to be physical in the world, and I like to keep in shape. And so film, that's why I chose it. There's movement. Yeah. That's why I chose it as an art form. So I'm not going to stand there and shoot. I'm going to move and shoot. Like, this interview is too static for me. Right, you want to be dancing around. <laughs> and I have a gallery opening I have to go to. I have my first solo show ever in my life at 71 years old and wow. a half at KOW Gallery in oh, Nitta. Wow. And tonight's the big premiere party. Really? You're all invited. <gasps> when is until, it? From now, 6 o'clock, oh. until 11. Wow. Oh, and then the, um, the month, your are It's up your for a whole month. month. Yeah, yeah, it's a regular gallery. And how so long will you be in Berlin? In Berlin? I'll only be in Berlin until Thursday. Until Thursday. Exactly. Yeah. But the films are from the 70s that they're projecting, and there's seven of them. Great. Complete films, really large projections. So headphones, you can go in and really be a part of my generation. Yeah, it's amazing. When we first walked down there, I just was about to start crying. I was so wow. proud of her. It's beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing to see it all there in one place like that. So you... you have you ever had to deal with fear, though? Or was that something that it's, you don't know so much? Well, I think as a woman, um, I am fearful about walking places alone, especially at night. And I think that all of us, as long as rape continues to be not only a weapon of war within warring countries, but also a weapon of war of men against women, um, I will have that fear. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's up to you brothers to make sure that that's brought up in your discussions, it that is. this is not the way to treat a sister, and that we are all equal and have a right to our street presence as free individuals. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to come out. No, it was true and <laughs> honest. That's yeah. when I, I guess fear motivated yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Is there any future projects planned? Or are there projects planned? Well, we both, Barbara, you know, just had her world premiere of Maya Darren's Sink. And then 
Um, I my film that I made sort of right after Barbara Hammer inspired me to start making film again. Um, All that sheltering emptiness was um, at Rotterdam last week, oh, wow. so that's amazing. And oh, then wow. I'm shooting now for my next film. So it's, you know, it's happening, both of us are, I mean, Barbara's been making work consistently for years, you know? How many films now? 80, 90, 100? So, um, <laughs> can't count, <laughs> can't keep track. But, um, but yeah, so now I'm um, going at it again, Great. too. Thank you guys so much. I Thanks really appreciate so this talk. And take good care of yourselves. Keep making films. Thank you. And good luck for the Teddy Awards, right? On Friday. Yeah, thank you. Wow. You are running for it, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Mm, I didn't even think about that. Thank you. Thank <laughs> yes. you, Gina. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you, Barbara. Great thank you, Gina. Great interview. Thank yes. you, Berlinale. Thank you, Berlinale. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>